Hey, Creative Mamas. My name's Christina, and I'm here with Creative Moms Decant. Now, today I have a Cricut Design Space hack that will hopefully save you some time, some energy, and some frustration. I am super interested in sublimation lately, especially the 20-ounce skinny tumblers. Those have been my jams this holiday season. Okay, when you do print and then cut on Cricut Design Space, you are limited. You can only do an image that is nine and three quarter inches by six and th I'm sorry, nine point one quarter inches by six, um, six and three quarter inches. So it's nine point two five by six point seven five. So when you're doing a skinny tumbler, the dimensions are approximately like eight and a quarter and nine and a half, nine and a quarter, like somewhere in there. So when you do a print and cut on your Cricut Design Space, you are missing out on all that extra space on the paper to wrap around your tumbler. And tumblers are so finicky. They are ridiculous ridiculously finicky, which makes this project really, really tedious. So how I used to do this was I would upload my image into Cricut Design Space and do my editing there and then make a screen, take a screenshot of what I was working on, uh, edit it, and then copy and paste it into Microsoft Word. But I was losing a lot of my quality in the image that I had created in my design space. I love Design Space because it's got all of my fonts and everything that I could absolutely possibly want right there at my fingertips. So to make my tumblers, it was just absolutely infuriating. So I'm going to teach you how to make a print then cut, but to utilize the entire piece of paper that you have. I have an Epson 2720 that I converted into a sublimation printer. So it prints out on standard sized computer paper, but I do use a sub paper, which is actually sublimation paper. You are more than welcome to use printer paper. I have done that in the past and I have had zero issue with what I've used regular printer paper with, but I do use sublimation, a sub paper, on my tumblers because I like the thickness. Um, I feel like it would help resist the heat a little more so my tumbler doesn't burn. <laughs> so enough talking shop. Let me actually show you what I mean by tricking Cricut Design Space into doing exactly what I want it to do. <laughs> I'm going to come up here to upload. Today I'm making a Valentine's Day tumbler for my son's teacher so she doesn't just get one of those crummy cards with a lollipop. She's better than the rest of the kids in the class. Let's get real. She deserves more than what usual Valentines that people hand out are worth. So I have my image here. It's uploaded. It's ready to go. So now I need to change my dimensions, okay? Now, if I were to put 9.75 in one of these, it is still too big in the height to do a print then cut. Do you see my warning label right here? My warning label says that I need to reduce the size. So instead of doing that 9.2, 9.75, I'm going to go over here. I'm sorry, even it's 9.25 sorry. Even if I did that, it is still too big. Please excuse me. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the larger of the smaller sizes. So 6.75. All right. So this is about where I need it to be. But now I want to make it personalized. Okay. So I want to come over here to my text and I want to pick a font here. I have so many gorgeous fonts that I just kind of get. And it's they're all cured now, like kerned now, where they're all stuck together. I mean, it's just getting better and better. Cricut is definitely listening to its customers when they are working on these updates for your uh, design space. Sorry, my son is playing with his toy in the background. I hope that is not too annoying or too loud. I'm going to bring myself closer to the microphone. I'm going to come up here. I like this, del this delightful font right here. Okay, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type in happy... Valentine's Day and it is St. Valentine and he owns the day so I'm actually going to put an apostrophe there and so this is what it kind of looks like happy Valentine's Day um, I like how it looks I'm okay with that so as soon as my design space catches up to itself I'm gonna weld that together and I like to weld it together even though I'm not cutting it because it makes it really smooth. All the letters kind of smooth in together there. And I'm going to change this from basic cut to print then cut. 
and then I'm going to change the color. Now you can come over here and I mean make it whatever color you want pretty much. You can come over here to some reds, some golds, some greens. I'm going to kind of go over to like the golds over here. Maybe go around that. That's pretty cool looking. I like that. It might be a little too bright for her to be able to read it. So maybe we'll stick with red. Red is such a lovely color for Valentine's Day. And I think... I'm going to just kind of shorten this out a little bit. Since I'm making a skinny tumbler, I actually want to flip this to go up and down. I want to do that so it goes up and down on the cup. So the cup goes from bottom to top reading Happy Valentine's Day just like so. And then... I have my beautiful font that I like. I have my awesome image that I like. I can adjust the size here. And I might even have to adjust the color because this color doesn't look as awesome as it could. Hmm. Let's come over here and then we'll try out like a black. That is sharp. Now it's not black. It's more of a charcoal. I like that. It says Happy Valentine's Day. It's kind of subtle. You have to really look for it. It's not too vibrant. Awesome. But now I'm going to Go over both of these pieces and I'm going to click attach so it knows to put all them together that this is one project. I want to print it exactly how it looks on the screen. So I went over here and I personalized it. Um, I got my image ready to go. I think that's it. Let's click on make it. Let me show you this hack that I have for you to print this on a full sheet of paper. Now, before I do this, I do want to mirror my image, okay? It wouldn't matter as much if I didn't have the writing because the hearts can kind of look either way. They're a little bit more abstract and not perfect, which is fun. But since I have the words down here, the Happy Valentine's Day, we don't want the words to be backwards. So I clicked mirror, and I'm going to go to continue. I'm sorry about my little guy in the background. I know sometimes hearing little kiddos in the background can kind of be frustrating but I'm a stay-at-home mom and this is my life <laughs> all right now I'm gonna click send to printer okay and out of habit for um sublimation I always turn my bleed off honestly I'm gonna like really show my ignorance here I don't even know what it does <laughs> but I just know that a lot of people say turn off the bleed so I turn off the bleed and I'm going to come down here and click on Use System Dialog. Now, when you use System Dialog, you can print using your own system and not Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to go over here and click that button. And it reads here, important, after clicking print, your print dialog may appear behind your Design Space application. Now, don't worry. We're going to click print, but it's not going to print just yet. I'm going to show you what happens when you click that. All right, I'm going to minimize my Design Space Studio and up pops this window here. Now, this is your printer window. If you were okay with this image exactly how it was, you can print it straight from Design Space or you can print it straight from here. I am not happy with how this image is. I have this black outline here that is usually used for the Cricut to guide itself around your image that you have. And if you print out this black line with your sublimation printer, as you would because you're printing out the rest of your things, this black line will sublimate onto your blank. And that is not something you want. You don't need this black line around your blank unless you like it. I mean, to each his own. So there's still some editing that I need to do of this image before I go to print it. So I'm gonna come here to PDF. And then this drop down window, and I'm going to click Save as PDF. Now, once I save it, I'm just going to come over here and just say Teacher Tumblr. Okay, and I'm going to save it right there to my desktop just so we can see it quickly. And it's ready to go. I'm going to open my PDF. There is my Teacher Tumblr. And here's where you can do a lot of your editing. Right here in this just PDF software that you have on your computer. I'm going to flip my image. Okay, and do you see how it's Happy Valentine's Day? It has it right there on the side going up and down just as I want it to. Now it's time to get rid of this black line. So click View and Show Markup Toolbar. I am a Mac user. Um, I'm not sure if Camilla or any of my other... Um, any of my other admins are not Mac users, so perhaps they could show you this trick on another computer that's not a Mac. 
Um, cause I'm not sure if you're a PC user, how, um, easy or adaptable this video would be for that. So that is my ignorance. I will kind of chat with Kamala and my other girls and see how we can do that for you guys. So once I have my um, toolbar up where I can see everything, I'm going to come over here to this little box right here. This is an outline box, not a filler box. So I want to click this outline box here and I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to drag. I'm going to drag over my image, okay? Now it's okay if you're not 100% perfect. Our goal here is to just get rid of this terrible black line. So once I've kind of seen where that is, I'm going to crop it. And this is just saying that um, the section that I picked could also print outside the lines. That's what that box window is. I just click OK because I'm well aware of, you know, what I'm doing and everything. And that's it, guys. Do you see I got rid of the black line that was around my tumbler and it's already mirrored for me. I'm ready to print. I'm pretty excited. I think this looks really, really neat. So I'm going to come up here and click File. And I'm going to go down here to print, okay? Now, it's already set to my Epson 2720 that I've converted into my sublimation printer. I will link my A-sub paper, my, um, the ink that I use in my Epson 2720, as well as the Epson 2720 in the description. I will link that for you. I just buy it all from Amazon. And I just kind of bundle it up, bundle it up, and I got it. If you're a little nervous about going the Epson route, because once you put sublimation ink, you can't go back to different ink and vice versa. You can't go to regular Epson ink or regular inkjet ink and then go to uh, sublimation ink. So once you do convert your sublimation printer right out of the box into a sublimation printer, you are stuck with it and you also void the warranty. I was gutsy and I figured eh, it's just 200 something plus dollars. Let me just give it a try. Held my breath and praise the crafting gods. It worked and it works like a charm. I do want to give you a heads up that the ink I use is perfection. So if you want a sublimation ink that you really just have no worries about, no qualms with, because trust me, um, some sublimation inks are better than others. I will link the ink that I use in the description as well. I have a friend of mine that um, has ink that's not the same brand as mine, and her red is coming out pink. So now she's got to drain her tanks and get different sublimation ink, and I don't want you guys to have to go through that. So I will link everything that I use in the description below. So back to printing out this um, tumbler, this tumbler um, wrap. So do you see here all this extra white space all around? We want to kind of get rid of that because we need to print out almost on the full piece of paper. Now you can come down here and click scale to fit and all you have are these extra pieces right here. But even these extra pieces that you cut off right here, um, you're still not going to get a full wrap around. You it's not a bad thing if you don't get the full wrap around, especially with this because it's a little bit on the abstract side. So you're, I mean, to each his own, you do what you want. I'm going to come here and click scale and I'm going to change this percentage. I actually am having a lot of luck printing in 138. I have done so many prints, so, so many prints back and forth and back and forth. And I feel like 138 is chef's kiss. It is awesome. So 138% is what you want to wrap around your tumbler. You are going to have to take off just a smidge of the hearts, but this is an abstract uh, tumbler, so that's not going to be an issue. Um, play around with the scale. Don't waste your, um, your printer ink if you're playing around with that. Just do like a simple black and white on your HP, whatever you got. So in order for me to fool around with how I got to the 138% was I did a fast draft on my regular printer that I have at home, not my sublimation printer, just to see how it would look when you wrapped around your tumbler. I don't use the tapered tumblers. So this 138% that I use that I work with fits on the skinny 20 ounce tumblers that are approximately eight and a quarter inches by about nine and a quarter inch or nine and a half inches. It's a little bit bigger than a quarter. It's kind of in between. Um, I don't use the taper. I struggle with the tapers because of gapping and stuff like that. So I use straight tumblers and I will link <clears throat> the tumblers that I use in the description as well. They are phenomenal. I have bought three different brands from Amazon and the ones that I'm currently purchasing are just absolutely fantastic. 
I will link them in the description. And I'm also needing you guys to let me know where I can buy them in bulk for not as costly and with the um, the shine to them. I like I don't like the matte. I like the the shiny. So let me know in the comments, guys, where you get your tumblers from and everything, and I will keep you posted on where I get mine and get you all in the description. So, anyways. Once I did my scale to 138%, I would come down here and click print and I would wrap my image around my clean tumbler and I would start sublimating. I really, really hope this video helped you to figure out how to use your design space and still print outside the box. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Open up a glass of open up a bottle of wine, pour yourself a glass, and we will craft together soon.